my beautiful lovelies. Hello, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another retro recipe. Today, I'm going to be making a recipe out of this cookbook. This is my Joys of Jello gelatin dessert recipe book. <laughs> this book is circa 1960. Let's see. This is second edition, and this is doesn't say the copyright. This is from the 60s. So this lovely cookbook contains all kinds of wonderful recipes. Basic Bavarian. I made this one, the Crown Jewel Dessert. I'll put the link down below and up there. It was spectacular. And there are some other ones as well that I want to try, including an entire cantaloupe hole coated with something or other, and then it's filled with jello. It's called the Frosty Melon. There's just something spectacular and wonderful about seeing things suspended in gel. Aren't those amazing? At this point, I've attempted many retro recipes. Most of them are disgusting and gross, but that's why I make them, because I'm just curious to see if they're as disgusting as they sound. And I'll put the playlist up there and down below in case you're curious. But lots of the recipes that I've tried include Jello. And today I'm going to be making a savory recipe. And it's right here. It's that one. And that's a picture of it right there. And this is the tuna salad jello. So this is tuna salad, meaning contains a can of tuna, and it contains mayo, and it contains a box of lemon jello. <laughs> because why not? That makes absolute sense, doesn't it? I actually prepared my jello last night so I could have it ready for you today. So let me walk you through the steps of how I got there. So we're gonna take a three ounce box of lemon jello, place it into a bowl, add a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a cup of boiling water. And we're gonna stir this until the jello is completely dissolved. Three quarters of a cup of boiling water. I put a cup. That's gonna make a difference. I hope this isn't too soft. To our lemon jello mixture, we're gonna add one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of grated onion, and three quarters of a cup of cold water. Then we're gonna add a half a cup of mayonnaise. Mix this all well. I used a whisk to make sure this is well combined. And then place this whole thing into the refrigerator. We want it to set up pretty thickly before we add our chunks. <laughs> a quarter cup of stuffed sliced olives, a half cup of chopped cucumber, and one can of tuna fish that has been flaked up. And optionally, you can add two tablespoons of chopped pimentos. So then, mix this all up, pour this into a mold, place it into the refrigerator, and allow it to set for several hours. So I let my jello sit in the refrigerator overnight, and here it is. <laughs> now, as you can see, the mold that I've chosen to use today is in the form of a lobster. This contains no lobster, but with the seafood theme, I thought this might work. All right, let's see if I can unmold this. I've always had a spotty track record when it comes to unmolding these, but I do manage to get them out eventually. So I'm gonna try a little bit different technique with this one. I'm gonna use my fingers and see if I can pull it away from the edge. No, it's not really pulling away from the edge like I want it to, a little bit. Okay. I accidentally put a cup of cold water instead of three quarters of a cup. This might affect its structural integrity, but we're <laughs> about to find out, which is just too bad because I really want it to look a lobster. All right, so what I'm doing is pulling it away from the edges here. Basically what we want to do is get air inside of the form so it releases. Invert my plate onto here. Invert it. There's my lobster. Hello, lobster. Now, in my 7-Up Jello video, if you saw that, I was doing a lot of vertical shaking. I was told afterwards that I need to do horizontal shaking. All right, let's try that. All right, because I definitely didn't hear it come out. Boy, this is awkward because this plate is so, okay. A little bit of up and down, no, okay. So, horizontal shaking. This plate is so big. It's not working, y'all. I can't grab it without... Okay, okay! <sighs> this is definitely the most nerve-wracking part of these recipes. Ooh, I heard some squish. No.
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, I heard, I heard it. I think it released. Okay, okay. I think it released. All right, let's hope that it got all the details. Oh. Oh my gosh, it did, yes. Yes! That came out pretty cleanly. Boy, it smells awful. It smells like onion and tuna. There it is, in its glory. Well, I would have liked to be a little bit more centered, but I'm not gonna attempt to move this. And look at that jiggle. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a monstrosity. But it came out, I'm so pleased it came out. I got curly parsley specifically for this recipe, and I'm going to tuck some in all around my lobster. Gosh, this smells so bad. For the finishing touch, I'm gonna add some radish roses that I made. Pretty simple, I just cut them around the edges and soak them in some ice water. Some of them open better than others, but maybe if I let them soak longer, they would open better? I don't know. Wow. All right, here is my lobster tuna salad. <laughs> it's absolutely frightening. Picked up all the details of the mold too. You can see some of the additions in there. There is some cucumber. I added a little snake of crackers here and I guess the next thing we do is to give this a taste. <laughs> all right, got myself a little dish and I'm gonna have it with a cracker. Here we go. I hate to cut into it. It actually is quite the vision, but cut I must. The things I do for you guys. Oh boy, got a piece of pimento stuffed olive on that one. Let's make sure we don't miss that. Mm. Here we go, itadakimasu. Mm. It's certainly not delicious by any means and that whole kind of thing that happened was really gross <laughs> but this actually doesn't taste as bad as I thought it was gonna be it has kind of a sweet vinegary flavor it's tangy it's sweet it's got the artificial lemon flavor and it definitely has a strong raw oniony flavor so this is definitely savory although there's a good amount of sweet in it uh, the chunks let's see if I can get a piece of cucumber in there the texture is very odd though. It's cold and jelly-like, but it has a very savory flavor to it. Mm. And I did get some cucumber in that, and it gives it a little bit of crunch and cucumbery flavor, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I think the cucumber actually works in this dish because it kind of breaks up the jello -y texture. This is not very delicious, although it doesn't taste as tuna fishy as I thought it was going to be. And what I find interesting is I think the little flecks of tuna have taken on the yellow jello food coloring. Do you see these little bits of yellow? I think these are the tuna fish flakes that have soaked up some of the yellow dye. So that's really odd. See those little yellow bits? There's no lemon peel in this at all. That's just dyed tuna which is odd. All right, let's try a big chunk of tuna right there. Oh man. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, that tastes like tuna fish, tangy and sweet tuna fish, kind of like pickled tuna fish. Not so bad, I suppose, but certainly not anything I wanna revisit. <laughs> So there you have it, the beautiful tuna salad jello circa 1967 or so. And let me know if there are any other retro recipes you'd like to see me make or try. Share this video with your friends, follow me on social media so you know what videos are coming up next and what little giveaways I have coming up. And I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>